So now we are very happy to have you for the third and last episode of African Business Makers. In this episode, we'll talk more about, you know, you, the deeper <laughs> in who you are, because this episode is a CEO therapy. And uh, have, as you have may seen, uh, we are trying to create kind of a safe place here yeah. where you can say anything. <laughs> So feel safe. <laughs> we'll ask a lot of spontaneous questions that you have actually no seen. So let's go. Okay. Um, I will start. What is your happiest, you know, memory about your professional professional sorry journey? My happiest. Wow. Um, there, there, there are loads of. This would of, be a personal one if you want. Yeah, there, there are loads of um, happy moments. I think one of the, uh, I'll tell you a few. One of the happiest ones was my first launch in terms of product launch. Um, look, taking that concept to commercialization or seeing your concept that you know you were thinking was on a piece of paper and now. Going into trade and seeing a consumer holding that is an unimaginable feeling, you know, to say, ooh, I made this. That's that's a great, great, great feeling um, in terms of um, um, moments. Um, when I got my when I got my job to move to South Africa as as managing director was one of the um, interesting times, I would say. <laughs> Um, because my, my boss at the time just asked me, I'd like you to move to South Africa and head up X, Y, Z. And, um, you know, that moment of him asking me and trusting me to be able to do that job, um, is, is, was amazing. Um, on the personal side, my greatest moments was, um, when my kids were born. I have two girls, um, just oh. that point in time in my life that, you know, you, you, you're like, Ooh, oh my God, I have this, this little lives to take care of. Um, yeah. And, um, at what, like what time of your career, uh, do you have like your girls? Was it like at the beginning of your career or at... You know? oh, no, 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 no. Um, no? Um, my girls are 12 years old. Um, okay. Yeah, so um, not at the beginning of my career at all. <laughs> um, I, I still twins. say that maybe I was late to the table. Twins, but, I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And like at, as a CEO, um, do you have like some moments when you feel, feel alone? Tough one. Oh, that's a question? Oh, I thought there was more. That's a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. Um, they say it's lonely at the top. And it, it is uh, sometimes because your team looks, looks to you for inspiration um, to unlock challenges. Um, so there's sometimes even when you're unsure or you don't know, um, Everybody's looking at you and saying, okay, so what should we do? Um, and sometimes in those times, it's, it's quite lonely because nobody truly understands what you go, go through as, as the head. Um, so it can be challenging at times. Um, the way I get through that, um, my family support is very strong. Um, you know, my wife is, is quite, Um, a, a strong pillar for me because when nobody else understands um, what's going on with you and despite the, the whatever the issues are, when you get to the door of your organization, um, even if you're unsure, if, even if you're a bit worried, you cannot show that. You, you walk in every day with your head high because the moment you show that, oh, I'm confused, that organization is going to be torn to pieces because everybody be like, oh, what do we do? So, yeah, it's it, it gets mm. lonely. And point. this is, I think, yeah, and this is interesting because I think it's something also cultural. Like yeah. in Africa, of course, if you, are, if you are the boss, you can't say, I don't know. 
you know, like, but you're on the bus. <laughs> how come you how don't know? You, yeah, how can you not know? Yeah. How? Yeah. Yes. So it's so cultural because, like, when you go, like, in the Scandinavian countries, uh, they will say, so I don't know, let's figure it out together, you know. So it, it's interesting what you're pointing out. Yeah. But you also, I mean, and for, for somebody like me, I also have my team around me who are strong. And it's, sure. you know, so you are able to, um, you know, get a lot of thinking, insights, understanding, and we sit in the room and say, okay, so what do we do? Doesn't necessarily mean that all the ideas have to come from me. I actually, on the contrary, mm. I don't even need to have any ideas. <laughs> it's just a, um, and, and what I tell the team is my job is to remove obstacles from your way, give you the resources to do the, the, the work that we need to do. So as long as I'm clear on the vision, I've told you this is where we need to go. The rest of it, honestly, is is the team. It's it's them mm. that, that, you know, kind of break th things down. My job is just to whatever. When they have challenges, they have obstacles. I remove that. When they need resources, I give them the resources. And that's it. And what is the hardest decision you had to make in your <laughs> career? Or um, personal life. I mean, here there, there was no career, like personal life as well. It could be, it could be, it could be interesting. Okay, personal life as well. <laughs> <laughs> you decide. You decide. No, I'll, I'll start with the 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 professional first. Hardest decision <laughs> is always about people. When you have to let people go, um, when you have to look at strategy. Um, how do you accelerate your business and it impacts uh, people? Um, again, you're human as well. So, um, and you, you kind of connect those, but um, you have to make those hard decisions without showing any remorse. Um, so uh, those days are tough. Those are the days that, you know, it gets even lonelier at the top, <laughs> um, you know? So yeah, those are the, the hard um, decisions. Um, I think from a professional side is, Again, it's about, um, for me, I think the hardest is um, living in a different country um, without my family. Mm. It's hard. Mm. <laughs> And it gets lonelier. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I think the, the, the good side of that is um, it helps you focus. Um, you, 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 you work a lot more all the time, but um, it helps you focus. Um, you you have what you're working for um, and there's there's that clarity. But um, uh, if there's anything that's been difficult is living in a different country versus my family. Yeah. Yeah, you have, go ahead. <laughs> I, have, I have one. You said at the very beginning of the second episode, I think, that your dream was to become like your dad. Do you feel like you've reached your dream? <laughs> I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say that the dream, it was inspired by him. Um, mm. uh, I think I, I, I wear the suits now <laughs> in a different way, yes. of course. Um, so, um, <laughs> but what people forget is, you know, um, especially when no matter how successful your parents are or at whatever level they are, where you, where you kind of start is where they stop, you know? So for me to be able to tell myself I've been successful is um, I need to go above and beyond where he kind of stopped. Um, so he was the chairman mm. of an organization. So I'm waiting to be chairman of an, an organization. Um, <laughs> But again, it's it's different parts. Um, I, I was very inspired as a young person. Um, I didn't need to go outside to to have my inspiration, which was great. Um, but I also saw what um, the, the 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 kind of negative sides of you know uh, working all the time and all of those things. And those are also the learnings I'm taking into my family life as well. Mm. And um, how do you um, manage to gain perspective? Like, you know, as you said, you're working a lot. 
um, your, I think, uh, dig in like the subjects to the topics you're working on. Do you have like some time to just, you know, withdraw off work and just uh, be on your own stuff? I don't know if you have lots of patience, uh, hobbies you're doing. Do you have those? Um, <laughs> it's it's funny because part of my work is is what I enjoy. So you know, creators of conviviality, and you were talking about why this industry. Um, yes, because <laughs> I enjoy I enjoy going out to the um, outlets. Um, I enjoy seeing consumers. I enjoy you know being part of that conviviality experience i enjoy our brands you know um i enjoy taking that time uh with friends and 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 all of that so it doesn't feel too much like work for me because it's it's part of you know what you do uh on a continuous basis so and i tell i tell i mean when i was younger i used to tell people i don't know how to go home at 6 p.m because um we are uh, that <laughs> in the industry I've chosen, it's you are out in the outlet and seeing your brands, your consumers and all of that. So, um, and I enjoy that, to be honest, I, I do enjoy it. But in terms of taking time out, it's really spending time with my family. Um, uh, cause I don't get to do that all the time, but, um, taking time out, spend with the, with the girls. Um, I love to travel as well. Um, my job does allow me to do a lot of traveling, but um, the the most significant one is when I'm traveling with family. Um, you know, enjoying new new places, new cultures, new people. That's what I enjoy, uh, and that's the only that's the time I take time out. Yeah. What was the last place you've uh, discovered? Oh, um, in Africa. I I don't mind. The last place. Um, place a country or you know culture you've been uh recently <laughs> i haven't gone too far um loads of travel in west africa um i think one of the in interesting countries um cote d'ivoire right oh they're mm -hmm. even oh, okay because of the <laughs> maybe it's top of mind also because there's the ah the, because the uh, afghan yeah. but um Cote d'Ivoire yes. is interesting. Um, one place that I really enjoyed was Namibia. Um, it's a beautiful country. Um, South Africa is home, you know. So, um, yeah. but maybe if I look at all the places I've been to in this world, the one that really resonates a lot with me is a little island of the Mediterranean called Malta. Malta, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, cool. It's, it's beautiful. Cool. Yeah. Cool, great, great. And you, you talked about your girls. What are the um, kind of values and inspiration you want to transmit to them? Um, I think one, you know, like I said, integrity, especially in, in, in the world that we live in, humility, um, but also knowing that n no one can 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 stop you but yourself. You can do anything that you want if you put your mind to it. Um, and never let anybody tell you that you can't. Because a lot of the time is it's it's our mindset when people kind of limit us or tell us that don't do this, don't do that. Uh, it limits what we truly believe we can do. Um, and for me, that's the, what I want them to know is that it's, it's infinity and beyond. It's limitless. You can be whatever you mm -hmm. want to be. And that's truly what I believe. Cool. Um, and do you have like, uh, maybe, uh, some, cause as I, you seem to be like, uh, someone who works, works a lot. Uh, do you have any, maybe, tips of uh, like productivity of organization for entrepreneurs of people who are watching or listening to us uh, to share to them? Tips, um, be clear 
what you want to achieve. So in terms of your objective, set it out first. Mm. If you if you need to write it down, write it down. Um, understand how, and then build. You know, understand how you want to get there. Build it. Build your plan. It's always important to take time out. I like to scribble, so I I I you know get a lot more clarity when I write things down. Um, you know, whether it's scribbling or just putting it in boxes, it it helps mm. me to kind of zone on to that that vision, you know, and then from there I can build on what are the other elements I need to add, you know. Um, so and and don't be afraid to to ask or to to research or to dig deep into, you know, who's done it before, um, how have they done it. Um, one of the things that I've also learned in in my career is always have a mentor. And a, and a mentor is somebody that has done things that you haven't and will help you to to kind of um, narrow the mistakes that, that you make uh, on, on that journey. You know, um, even just yesterday, I was talking to my mentor. Um, I have a few, but I was talking to one specific yeah, one. And, yeah. and the kind of insights that um, she did give me um, helped helps in terms of you know where i am and what i'm i'm trying to do now so have a mentor uh be clear on your objective um you know be able to articulate it clearly um the conversations on a on a one minute um elevator pitch is true um because if you can't describe what you want to achieve in one line then it's 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 not clear sure Great, yeah. What you're saying, like about mentors, is quite true. It's it's gaining time, actually. Yeah. You say like narrowing the, the mistake and gaining a lot of time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of time. Exactly. Is there maybe anything you would like to add? Uh, any topic we didn't discuss and that you think is important for our auditors? You know, who are people who are interested in business in Africa? Maybe want to launch a company or to be a GM. A company just like you. <laughs> I think um, everybody always looks at Africa as a challenging continent. Um, the ease of doing business is tough. Um, you get people describing Africa and, and countries in in different ways, um, but the truth is, Africa is really about our people, and they're some of the friendliest people that you will ever meet. Um, if you take the the chance and you take the the time, the opportunity in in Africa is is is. I mean, you can't really quantify it, regardless of whatever the category or regardless of whatever the industry you want to go into. Um, but it's it's taking that leap of faith, <laughs> if I put it that way. Yes. Um, to invest, not only in, you know. Um, whatever business you want, but also in the people. Take a chance on the people. You see that we're some of the uh, smartest people in the world. Um, I'll take Nigerians as one, but <laughs> everybody uh, no, no, already no, 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 knows no. that. I knew you would do that. I knew it. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> so from a human resource point of view, from a opportunity potential point of view, uh, it's a vast continent. Um you know, we, we have a lot of the world's resources. We have a lot of the, you know, arable land in the world. So there's a lot going on for us. We just need to be able to structure it and we need people to be able to be part of that. Um, the, hmm. the, 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 the Africa is the, I would say the, the undiscovered continent and it's the next frontier. Everybody says that, but the truth is it is only the human hmm. resources alone. Um, is is yes. is immense, uh, is immense. So, uh, if there's anything I tell everybody out there, um, take a chance on Africa. Cool. Thank you so much, Sola. It was a pleasure, actually. Uh, you share a lot of things. Thank you for your deepness, your time, your generosity. Yes. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank um, you very it was, much.